I'll go first. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Eric Winkler. I am the writer and executive producer of I Am Lisa, and you are watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. I am joined today by very talented people. The writer of I Am Lisa, Eric Winkler. How's it going, everybody? You know, why did you badger Patrick so much to get this film made? <laughs> well, um... Black because he's, okay. Yeah, no, I mean, he's... <laughs> he's been doing this for 20 plus years and you know i was a novice you know i i've written my whole life you know i, I wrote for the kansas city star and um i've always enjoyed writing but um as far as actually making the film i wanted to have somebody who knew what the hell they were doing and you know i'd seen um i think Nailbiter and arbor demon and so forth you know two of patrick's films and uh very much enjoyed them and you know hey he's right here in kansas city and um yeah i mean he's he shudders at this but he's probably the biggest director in the city so it was sort of like a you know is uh yeah it was a dream come true you know i i you know i went to that screening where i met him for the sole purpose of meeting him which i made sure to do so uh yeah yeah that's why i, I wanted him uh, so eric then uh I mean, it's safe to say that I think you enjoy the horror genre based on what's behind you. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was it about the first draft of this story that just kept you involved and interested in, in trying to get this made? Yeah, well, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, including us in, you know, the likes of movies like American Werewolf of London, which is one of the greatest werewolf films of all time, of course. So. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, I was, you know, 40 years old when I started writing this. And, uh, you know, it's it's like Patrick and Kristen and my wife would all say is, yeah, when I set my mind to something, I can be a little bit of a bulldog about it and just be, you know, being annoyingly persistent until I get what I want and get the film made. <laughs> so, uh, which, I mean, honestly, I feel like you probably kind of have to do with a movie. I mean, uh, movies are hard to get made and so um yeah you know I've, I've always been a fan of horror um i'm drawn to you know character um you know female uh uh protagonists um you know I've, I've written several movies now this is the first one we've made but all of them have a female lead and you know i always say it's because you know i'm a straight white male and uh you know there's been plenty written about us and i don't find us very interesting as a demographic <laughs> so uh <laughs> so i i really i just wanted to um make a movie where uh w with a strong woman and uh i i also i kind of like the idea of having it's it's almost like a superhero origin story in some ways i kind of like the idea that um she's almost like a superhero but her superpower is that she's a werewolf um so yeah uh, first day on set what was the the energy about the first scene once that was done i feel like there was a little bit of a nervous energy maybe that's probably that way with all you know first days yeah. but yeah i mean our entire cast and crew is so talented and so professional we gelled together really quickly and yeah i mean i had faith the whole you know the whole shoot would go great and it did and you know depending on what patrick said just watching like how well he and Kristen and our dp hanuman brown eagle the way they worked together they were just on the same wavelength and it was it was a joy to watch for me so. well yeah and that was supposedly ten thousand dollars worth of cuban cigars if i recall correctly <laughs> And that same person had come up to Jake Jackson, our effects guy and producer, uh, earlier that day and asked him if he could get an I Am Lisa t-shirt if he worked for us for the day. And I think, I don't know what he said. He had to have been, well, sorry, <laughs> random stranger, no. The notes that you received from you, the people that you sh showed the script to, as well as um, just the rewrite process, because that's usually a difficult process because every script is usually a writer's baby, to be perfectly honest. It's very hard to yeah. strip away uh yourself yeah. and 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 that's aspect you know f 
for you to get to the stage to get I Am Lisa produced and directed by uh, and acted with with an amazing cast and crew, what did you have to go through to really get to that final stage that you were like, all right, this is all I can do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get to that point where you just have to put the pencils down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really the bulldog thing in me and, you know, networking as much as I could, you know, um, you're right. I, I, I remember Lady Gaga was, it, you know, the first time she was interviewed by Howard Stern, he was like, what's it like releasing a new album? And she said it was like showing the world her vagina. <laughs> and it, it's, uh, <laughs> and that's really true. You have to kind of, you know, you've got to be strong willed because it is your baby and you put so much of yourself into it. But you have to, you know, the initial drafts of the were just, you know, it was a learning process for me. You know, I, you know, they always say, uh, don't underestimate your audience. And I was just, it was just too much. And it was basically unfilmable. So uh, I obviously, I don't blame Kristen in any way for passing on it initially because it needed a lot of work. But yeah, I just got as many people to read it as I possibly could, or as I possibly could. And um, I would take good ideas from anybody who was willing to give them to me. And um, you know, through that collaboration, we made something better than I could ever hope to do by myself. Um, and, you know, I, I found that collaboration to be nothing short of absolutely exhilarating. So I, you know, the hope is someday I can just uh, work on movies for a living. It's funny you mentioned rewrites because I'm actually working on uh, the rewrites for Lisa too right now. Like I have the uh, program open up on my computer right now. So it's a uh, it's 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 a lot of fun, so, a lot of hard work, but it's not really work if you enjoy doing it. Were you on set for any of this as well? I was. Awesome. Oh yeah, I was on set the entire time. Um, I kind of, I acted as the script supervisor. You know, I've never really done that before, and what I did wasn't as in depth. But um, yeah, I was always on set, and you know, I was always really honored um, because you know a lot of times the actors would come up to me and be like, hey. You know, do you mind if I change this little, you know, this word here or there? And and ninety nine percent of the time, I was like, oh yeah, that works way better. Go for it. So, um, it was for me a, a real honor just to have you know experienced actors come up and ask me things like that. So, uh, and I very much appreciated it. It's like I said, it it made things better. It, was there a scene that you wrote down that you were like, this I'd love to see this visually and did. Did Patrick and, and Lisa, uh, sorry, did Patrick and Kristen and, and the rest of the cast kind of bring that to reality for you? Um, yeah, I mean, really the whole entire movie, um, just seeing it come to life, it's, you know, you, you sit there at some point and you're like, man, this whole thing is happening because I, you know, I sat down and started writing it. Um, but I guess I would say the entire finale sequence, um, I mean, it, it, you know, you always have, you know, kind of a scenes going on in your mind's eye as you write. And to see the, the finale sequence kind of come to life, pretty much just how I had it in my head. Uh, yeah, it was fantastic and uh, just amazing, thrilling. So. No, for sure. It's uh, it's definitely something that that takes a, a, a true team effort. And from what I'm, from what I'm hearing from you guys with, with I Am Lisa and... And, and the experiences, everyone that went through this film, it sounds like it's an incredible, um, it was an incredible time and a short amount of time to make it a truly uh, epic feature film. So thank you for, for the, the trailer and thank you for your hard work for that. I can't wait to see the feature film on, when, when is the feature film coming out? Um, so in the, in the United States, uh, January 5th at Redbox kiosks uh, across the US, and then Mutiny Pictures, our distribution firm, has signed a deal with, I think it's called Level Film, in, to release the film in Canada. And I don't have an exact date on that. Oh, no worries. Um, but I will get that to you as soon as I find out. <laughs> yeah, you don't know, do you, Patrick? It's. And then I think in March, we've got more release, right? We've got like yeah, yeah. Amazon and DVD and- Fandango and iTunes and stuff. Yeah. And Blu-ray. <laughs> Blu-ray is going to be apparently exclusive at Best Buy, um, which is cool. Yeah. And um, but then like the UK release, I think is supposed to be in April. Mm. And I don't know when the Canadian release is going to be. But we yeah we signed with Level Film, which is, is a cool company. Um, I think they distributed um, 
the Peanut Butter Falcon last year and some other uh, pretty well-known movies. So, I I'll just say this. I mean, most werewolf movies are about the protagonist, you know, um, deal, you know, being disturbed by their their change and you know they you know their lo- their loss of control basically. Um, and I think I, you know, I knew we weren't going to have enough money to make, you know, a transformation scene like in American Werewolf in London. Um, so I, I always really liked this idea of using the werewolf as a, as a metaphor, which is, um, you know, just sort of the survive, you know, with the Me Too movement, it's sort of the, the struggle a survivor goes through. Um, and, and, you know, I took great inspiration from movies like Ginger Snaps, which also mm-hmm. kind of uses the werewolfism as a metaphor. And um, after I wrote this, I saw a movie called When Animals Dream, which is, I think, Danish or something like that. But it's uh, it's probably the most similar movie to ours, even though it's not really a revenge flick, but it's, uh, it's a werewolf sort of coming of age flick. And it's really good. Not only that, but uh, yeah, I mean, our entire cast and crew, you know, either lived in Kansas City already or had connection had you know had connections here except for Kristen but uh you know that first time we flew her out to get castings done for the prosthetics and stuff we you know we took her right to one of the best barbecue joints in the world so she she's been back several times now so she's an honorary Kansas City and now as well everyone has one or two people that kind of inspired them on their path to where they are today who was that for you professionally you know I'm a a child of the 80s uh you know people like filmmakers like Paul Verhoeven and I guess this would be the 90s but like Quentin Tarantino were big inspirations for me and you know in my personal life I guess this is kind of cliche but obviously my mother um my father my wife um you know I, I lost my father uh about a year before we started filming. And if you watch through the end of the end credits, um, it's dedicated to his memory. And um, I will say one of the people who was the biggest influence on me in my life was a teacher I had when I was a junior in high school. Um, His name is Joe DeGrado. And uh, just really, the class was called problem solving because I don't think they knew what to call it, but um, he just expanded my mind in ways that uh, I'm extremely thankful for. From a professional standpoint, you've written for the Kansas City Star. You've uh, written two scripts already, and you continue to write throughout your life. Do you consider yourself personally successful? Yeah, yes, I do. I mean, on a personal level, I mean, I always say the thing I'm most proud of is my family and friends, my you know, uh, wife and my sons and these two lovely people, uh, my colleagues here who are also very close friends now. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, you know, I think you have to follow your heart. I mean, I always like to say, you know, Kristen and I are working on a movie called Sober about, um, it's an LGBT love story, dramedy, basically, it's very different. Um, but, uh, I always say, you know, American society sort of puts your value as a human being on, uh, how much money you you have or how big your house is or whatever and i just i don't subscribe to that i don't think that's really a measure of success like if you enjoy what you're doing um then you know then you're a successful person and you know with all of my writing whether i was working at the star or you know writing these movies now um i've always just and maybe it's selfish but i've always just kind of written to amuse myself and i always just say well you know, hopefully other people enjoy it too and it'll be unique enough that it'll be you know distinctive and you know other people will like it so yeah the reverse of success is failure how do you deal with your failures when i think of failure i always think of abraham lincoln you know uh, I, I don't have the list in front of me but i've seen it before a list of all of the failures he had in his life um and you know he's now considered to be our greatest president of all time obviously no justin trudeau but you know america's greatest <laughs> president so um so yeah i mean failures are a learning experience i mean you, you could call my initial script uh, uh, of i am lisa a failure if you wanted but 
I mean, it's just a matter of perspective. It was in actuality, it's something I needed to do. And I, you know, I needed to learn and it was a great learning experience. So, uh, you know, I, I think we as humans, we, we tend to be very self-critical and, you know, Lord knows I am and I fail often, but, you know, you just gotta put that out of your head and, and keep going and do the best you can and focus on the good things. The younger generation are looking at your work as, as a writer and they're looking mm -hmm. at your, your now I am Lisa and they're seeing uh, a creative side that maybe they haven't approached themselves. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? I think just do what we did. You know, um, I, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of the people that have seen our movie, you know, hearing positive feedback, it just really touches your heart. And, you know, this, you know, making this movie was a collaboration with all these wonderful people and it's our legacy. And so for future generations, I would just say, you know, you're kind of like what Kristen said, you know, your art lives forever and, you know, follow your heart and, and give it all you've got. And, you know, you'll likely inspire the next generation. You know, I, I hope that I've, you know, my sons are 11 and 14 and I, I hope that I've inspired them to follow their passion and, and, you know, enjoy every minute that this life has to give us. You know, I hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. But before I let each one of you go, please take the time to promote yourself on social media or where else we can find you on the wide world of the internet. Yeah, I've got, you know, the, all the personal social media stuff. Um, I'm not too hard to find if you want to find me, but, you know, I will promote the movies. You know, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at I Am Lisa Movie. And I think soon we should have um, our website up and running, which is just IamLisaMovie.com. And there might be some, you know, various news and maybe a blog, possibly some merchandise. So, yeah, hit us up. We, we love hearing what you guys have to say about uh, about our movie. And thank you for watching. Like I said, that ends this, this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You, of course, find this interview and the thousands of others that I've done over the past 12 years on TGTmedia.com or TwoGeeksTalking.com course we are on youtube youtube.com forward slash c forward slash tgt media and of course two geeks talking is the word two not the number two if you use the number two you really haven't been following me for 12 years now have you shame on you <laughs> that being said uh, you can find me on social media at kurt sasso on twitter facebook instagram whatever uh but that ends this episode and this will be the very first episode of january 2021 because the film is going to be released on Redbox January 5th, I believe you said. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right. Thanks, everyone, listening, watching. Tune in next week for another great interview on Two Geeks Talking, where everyone has a story to tell, and it's up to me to help bring that out. Thank you. Hey, all, Kurt Sasso here from Two Geeks Talking. If you like this video and these quick clips here, make sure you take a look at our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash TGT Media. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe as well. Hit the bell. And begin sure you get notifications, of course, from videos like this here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening and watching over the years, and keep listening and watching for new and exciting interviews with talented, creative people in the entertainment industry. I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Thank you so much.